Hello there. Welcome to Liberty Church Manzini's Bible Study. We are going through the New Testament together and I'm thankful that you have chosen to join us today. And today we'll be learning from the book of Galatians chapter 2. As we begin, I just want to encourage us to continuously be reading our Bibles and praying every day. You know, in this time that many of us have it to self-isolate, we can stay connected through the practice of daily reading the Bible and praying. And maybe when something stands out to you, you get to share it with your community group or you share it with your discipleship circle or you just post it on Facebook and bring good news into this world that is looking for salvation. So let's look, we're going to read verse 8 to 10 and I'm going to share a short devil that I've entitled Dealing with Different. Let's read from verse 8. For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as the apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, and John, who were known as the pillars of the church, recognized the gift God had given me, and they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continued their work with the Jews. Their only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor, which is what I have always been eager to do. We all deal with different people. In this chapter, we are going to learn some keys that can help us be successful in dealing with different people. The first key is going to be in today's audio and today's video, and the second key is going to be in an audio and a video that will be sent out at some point on Tuesday. So let's begin. The first key to being successful in dealing with different is recognizing that there are some who are different because God has given them a different gift. As a pillar walking in my lane, God gives me co-workers. You know, God recognizes the work that I'm doing and maybe you are laboring hard Maybe in the host team, maybe you are leading somewhere at work and you are doing a fantastic job and you are a pillar. Just like it was here with uh, Peter, James and John. They were doing a fine work in Jerusalem. And I have found that every house needs more than one pillar for it to be really strong. And it's the same with the house of God. So God sends us core pillars, people that will come and complement the work. However, those co-workers are often different. Differently gifted, differently wired, and we see it here in verse 8 and verse 9. It says, For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as the apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, and John, who were known as pillars of the church, recognized the gift God had given me and they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. So maturity is being able to recognize and accept a differently gifted co-worker. They don't think like me, they don't dress like me, but they are on the same field. That's the best word that I can find for it. But they, they can be called a co-worker even though they are not identical. So we recognize and accept them by doing three things. I observe three things that um, James, John, and Peter did to recognize and accept Paul and his disciples. The first thing that they did is they encouraged them. We see this in the first part of verse 9. It says they encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continued their work with the Jews. So from here I observe that I have work that God has for me. You have work that God has for you. And God brings co-workers that are differently gifted. And the key is not to try and copy them, to become like them, but rather to encourage them. That as they continue their work with the Jews, you continue your work with the Gentiles. And the house of God continues to grow. You know, the work of God continues to progress going forward. It's not about competing with each other, 
but rather complementing each other. And we see it beautiful here that uh, James, John, and Peter recognized that their grace was for the Jews. And they said, Paul, you guys go for it. Continue the work that you are doing. The second key that I see here is that we recognize and accept them by coaching them. And here we see it in verse 10 where it says, uh, James, John, and Peter, his only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor, which is what I've always been eager to do. So when you recognize someone who is differently gifted from you, there is something that you could give to them, an, an angle, a different angle. And for here, James, Peter, and John had experienced something as they were starting the church in Jerusalem. There had been a bit of memorying, and um, because of that, they had to appoint some deacons who were responsible for the food distribution so that they would continue the work that they were doing. And so they had learned how to deal with people and how to make sure that the people who were poor and disadvantaged were not forgotten. And so they coach Paul and they say, Paul, hey, we encourage you and we want to coach you. Don't forget the poor. And it turns out Paul, being of the same house, already had the same heart. So you find that even though people are differently gifted from us, at their core, if they are of the same house, this, the core, the DNA is the same, even though the outworking is different. And then finally, we recognize and accept our differently gifted co-workers by learning from them. You know, we find here that a few verses later, starting from verse 11, Paul is now the one who is coaching Peter. Peter comes and he does something that is not according to the message that um, Paul and Peter believe. And so Paul begins to talk to Peter and he actually does it publicly. That's how serious it was. And you'll find that if we recognize, you know, if we encourage, if we coach people well, one day they begin to help us as well. Because the, the true mark of really growing and evangelizing people is that one day they get to surpass us. And that is okay. There is no problem with them beginning to maybe even have a more significant ministry. Maybe go out and start their own church. That is a sign of health. That is a sign of growth. And humility is being able to receive from those who used to primarily receive from me as well. So as pillars, you know, as people that are making a difference in our work, in our home, you know, in our teams, my prayer is that we will be those who can be mature enough to recognize a differently gifted co-worker. As I conclude, I want to ask us a question, maybe something for us to ponder on over these next couple of days. Is who in my world am I dealing with right now who is different because of a different gift? This happens a lot at work. You know, you'll find there's jokes about how accountants are of a similar personality, our bassists in the band, you know, they have got their own kind of personality, how, you know, we have geeks, you know, the ones who come and fix our computers. But I wonder, maybe at work, who in your workplace is different because they are not necessarily different DNA, they are just a different gift. Who at home, you know, maybe every time you guys are having a family discussion, this person rubs you the wrong way, they bring up things that you consider trivial. But God is allowing that person to come into your life to help supplement you as a co-worker. Who in my team, maybe somebody who's just, I'm, I'm ready for them to, to resign from the team and join another team. But God is saying, I have given you this person and I want you to be mature enough to learn to recognize and accept that even though they are different, they are actually the same. My prayer is that as we find these different people, we may apply these three principles to them. Encourage them, coach them, and learn from them. Let me pray for us as we conclude. Father, we pray for the grace to grow and mature in learning to recognize and accept a differently gifted co-worker at home, Lord, at work, in our schools, in our teams, in our church. May we be pillars in the house of God who are secure, mature, stable enough to recognize and accept a differently gifted co-worker. In the name of Jesus, I pray. 
Amen.